D2. And the beauty in it is they already played against Heretics on it. They understand right. the layering of utility that was punishing them on their defensive side the last time around. So now that yeah. they've had time to make changes, make adaptations, this could go the other way. You hear the panel broken at the very beginning of the round. Trent posted up there currently. As Heretics are being real slow with this start. This is going to be a head-to-head -head duel right here. A re-clear from G2. I think they think there's only a Cypher here. But that nade and the Viper Molly. They have nowhere to go. They don't realize they're being melted. Jonah P's spit is perfect. That trap was perfect. And again, it doesn't matter if it was a mass group. It doesn't matter if it was just Benji Fishy. It could have just been Benji there. But they were ready for that. An info gathered on Boo here. Pat Attack has something to say about it. Last player standing. Spike down. That is the last one alive here. And he's so far out of reach of the spike. G2 have full control of the area. Nobody's getting within the vicinity of it without somebody finding out. A turret here as well. It'll give G2 all the info that he is in B site. I mean, this would take even more heroics than that comeback we saw from G2 on the last map to secure this one. 30 seconds left. Yeah, he's got some time to, to feel it out and play it out, but... The best case scenario is... Well, yeah, those that little, was those probably little, the best case scenario, sorry. Those little T-Rex arms there. <laughs> they, won't, they won't reach, they weren't far enough. <laughs> So G2 get the pistol. This is exactly the start that they needed, right? They have a really nice trap set up. You saw the nade over the top, the spit on the other side, the paranoia. They had nowhere to go. They were put in a pen. And, and this then they guy capitalized off that. And this guy right here to get three into the round. The last time around, he only had five kills. He already has three to his name. This is the Trent that everybody knew. The, the, the Wonder Kid. The Protégé. That fall line at the beginning of the round. A lot of spam damage as well, though. Suggests where heretics are headed. And you're right, that spam damage is going to slow them down at least a bit. Heretics do farm that orb, though. So some value into this round, even though they're on a classic buy. No one buying really much of anything. No. No deagles. They don't. They don't want to deal with Leaf into that bonus round. They understand that he likes to buy the outlaw on almost every single map when they win the pistol round. But this time around, he actually has the stinger. So maybe even he's reading a little bit ahead into this. Trent getting a little bit of an idea of where the attack is headed. You've got all of that killjoy utility. C. Mm -hmm. Who has slipped the net though, or at least you would think he was. But Joe to P wise to it. Yeah. Lulling him into a false sense of security. Yeah, G2 are willing to play retake on that A site so they can play this heavy B. That tether will connect on some players, but the bomb will go down. 30 seconds left. Bounce playing on the other side. We mentioned how weak a couple of those members are on the side of Heretics. Should be dealt with and dismissed pretty effortlessly. And it's Leaf who cleans it all up. And honestly, given that they're playing defense, that lockdown matters. It matters a lot. And not only that, but Leaf, he's been pretty quiet all series long. So for him to just get on the board, start feeling himself, that's yet another win condition that G2 can have in this half. He gets an upgrade, too, to the Bulldog. Here's that nice spray down with the Stinger. They all just died instantly. <laughs> I shot, like, five bullets and killed three people. Indeed, they did. He just melted them. Yeah, they got melted. Two rounds on the side of G2, two kills on the side of Heretics. But now they've got guns, now they've got armor, full util, and you see a couple of pings on the minimap right now, and interest, interested in what's happening on Seaside. No fault line invested this time around. It's already disrespecting the one way that G2 have been showing early on. Trent, so proactive on this side of the map. Yeah, clearing out the cam. Taking away some of those tools that they have. Meanwhile, there wasn't enough of this lockdown utility cleared out, so some damage will be dealt onto Woot. Valen on the reposition, tries to get away, but it's Leaf who falls. A Little bit of a miscommunication there. I think Leaf thought there was gonna be a double swing, or maybe he needed to help Valen to get out there, but the Omen TP 
It, that's what got him out of dodge. G2 are getting closer and closer. Ian's committing to getting the plant down, and they're going to frag their way through this. Very nicely done, avoiding the disaster of a bonus. Heretics are on the board. And it was a very convincing C hit. That's going to give Heretics confidence to run it down C a couple more rounds, maybe later in the half, or maybe even now. That hold from G2, it was just too apart. Leaf is running in while Valance keep being out. A little bit of a disconnect in the defensive setup of G2 in that nice. round. Let's but it was go. only a bonus round. <laughs> Into the next we go. I'll find you. You've got full util on both sides. You've got full rifle on both sides as well. And this time a 4-1 the opposite way. Yeah. In the previous round, it was Benji who was playing towards A. This time C. Whoa. Leaf besting Benji this time around. That's a very different tale from what we've seen so far. And the closing chapter for the pages to change this way is perfect. That B door being open, though, that broken door, it might pay out dividends to Heretics here. Trent, the only player on the opposing side of it, he gets a little tag on the Woot, but he's going to have to back up. This might be a free B site. Interesting really? smoke. I was going to say, it's a really nice smoke out from Valen, right? Yeah. Worm is just so uncomfortable oh to try to get through at this point if they want to try to push that. Kind of forcing them into the A site, but Rians, this is where Heretics were so strong the last time around. The utility and the layering of it was what punished G2. Jonah P is the only one on site, he's and he's gotten past the fault line. Tucked in the smoke, waiting to strike. He spots one, cleans him up, daring the challenge on the second, and Patatek never saw him. Jonah P with three. Clean round from Jonah P, and disrespect the other way around. It was all because of that one change of the orb. We're seeing the adaptations that I was talking about that G2 could put in. Icy with this entry as well onto Woot. That was clean. But this, this one orb and playing inside of it this time around. So the breach stun doesn't hit you. The flashes won't hit you. It's going to be micro changes like this. Different looks that Heretics think that they have the read on. That'll be the deciding factor of G2 punishing them. And they're already up 3-1 on this map. Icebox feels like a life ago. G2 looks so comfortable on defense right now. Shadows travel. Even the way that they're positioned around the map, if Heretics do decide to hit towards this B site, you have to deal with an Omen Flash, a Tether, a Nade from Heaven potentially. And it's proactivity. They want to clear out Benji Fishy here. It's going to connect onto him. Oh! Gets caught right. on the wall. But they know where he is anyway. Look There's the that. suck. There's the Nade. He's worse for wear, but he stays alive. And there's a spit on the other side. It's the exact same combo. I don't know how he lived through all that. It was almost a miracle. The only thing that wasn't a part of that was balance paranoia. Maybe that was the difference maker. Either way, Heretic's still healthy, still alive. As they look to find space with the five they have. Look at how Jonah P is positioned right now, Doug. Last time he was inside the actual smoke on the right side if you're on Pat Attack's POV. This time, that little micro sidestep to the left on the default box. Seconds left. All these Find things play a factor into how Heretic's entry into the site. Suspicious that it might be a hit B. The paranoia comes out, the eye comes through, but again, it's attention. A boot on the satchel out. I see keeping him back and getting the best of them. I see delivers once more. With 10 seconds left, they might be able to get the spike down, but again, it's out of reach. Boo scoops it up, and they're committing to the plant now. G2, they don't flood. They give it up, wanting to settle things for just a moment, spotting where they are, but that might have been their gravest mistake. Benji Fishy getting the ult down, getting the kill onto one. We'll have to snap one more time onto Trent. Can he deliver for G2 again? Trent creeping forward. The box on the other side, the eye comes out. Benji on the swing, he's going to get tagged. Location given away. There's the swing and Benji Fishy with three. The Red Bull clutch for Team Heretics. He does it once more. It seemed impossible. He had no space to work with. 
But with great finesse, he closes out the 1v2. These shots were so clean. No chance in hell. And the handshakes are out now. So an answer back. And not a moment too soon. Heretics again accelerating towards C. That's going to get the pit out right at the very beginning. Meanwhile, Blue ulted at the same time. While all that was happening, A space was gained by G2. So Heretics are going to have to come back and re-clear Trent, who almost took the head off of Blue. Yeah, almost got his taken off in exchange, too. <laughs> that will make G2 have to fall back a little bit, play in that second layer. And with that, a deposit of Benji Fishy, who's probably feeling really confident right now to take any type of 50-50 duel. Caps the door. I see just got baited into using his ult there. He's going to get the kill on Benji Fishy, but the rest of the hit is C. They've got the Nightfall to clear out the pit. Jonah P again in the exact right spot again. Leaf joins in on it, but Boo's left alone. He spammed his way through two. But those were the easy ones. Now he's going to have to deal with Trent. He's going to have to deal with Leaf. Seconds left. And I see we've seen one clutch already from Heretics. It was at the hands of Benji Fishy, but Boo cannot pull it off. Jonah P is doing such a good job right now, Doug of playing around the Breach utility and the Fade utility in this case. He's sneaking around. He's like Houdini on these sites. Maneuvering around the smokes in such a way that he's catching Team Heretic's sideline. Spike nice. Eight, three, and nine. Jonah P, the professor. There. And an answer back once more for G2. And you imagine if this half keeps going this way, it's gonna favor the defending side. This is an attack-sided map. G2's Sentinel utility currently posted up B. And it's not just utility, they have three down. members watching over it. So good, the deep alarm bot. He's here for the flood in case they actually do decide to go towards B or even take A space and pivot. I wonder what the cue is for G2 to start being a little bit more proactive. Use that fade utility front B. I mean, you don't need it when Leaf is besting Benji Fishy. He's just got beams today. It looks so clean. This time, Jonah P tagged by the utility that he's done such a good job of avoiding, and it does not matter. The same result as Jonah P gets three. Boo gets his one. It's a consolation prize, though. And Jonah P will close it out with four. Already working towards another Viper's Pit. A little bit of pop shots as well at the end there. G2 looked like a completely different team this time around on this map. And this is what you were speaking of. Even in the fault line. He still gets the molly out. He's still able to connect the shots. So calm in his crosshair. <laughs> 5-2, the way of G2. Josh smiling, the crowd smiling. And a timeout for Heretics. Not too many smiles over there in that camp. A chance to slow things down, though. And this is the around the same time that we saw G2 called their first two timeouts on maps one and two. It was when things were, yeah, I mean, when they were down, but there was still time to adjust. There was still time to kind of make these minor changes that could potentially get you back into the half. And they're going to need to make some changes because the last time around they played Reans, he was phenomenal with his breach utility. This time he has no assist. He's not online and in the fragging department. And Woot, I mean, he's sitting at one kill as well. So he's not really able to enable Woot the same way that he did the first time around. That's the thing with running breach comps. There's only so many things you can do. It's a little bit limited. And it can be so hard to even just change your timings on the stuns and still be so coordinated and synergistic to enable your duelist. Shadows traveling. 
three ends with a nightmare of a start to this map, but he does have the rolling thunder. There's no way Jonah P plays ahead of this again. I don't right? think so, but I do like what I'm seeing towards B. A little bit of proactivity. Yeah. But Benji Fishy, he's going to get a reclear here and potentially a kill. Oh, I think he saw a leap off back off. Feet. There's the rolling thunder. G2 just give the space up. They understand that they have the lockdown from Leaf. It's going to be a five on five retake in this round. But Leaf has the lockdown like you were talking about. Rocket to answer back. It doesn't connect, but it gets destroyed. What's the counter off of that? Where's the next punch coming from? Patatek pushing forward. Boo the first to fall. Patatek has played his position so nicely as bodies drop all around him. Stays up, stays alive. Now Benji Fishy joining him. Number still the way of the defense, though. Trent weak, but still alive. And oftentimes, that's enough. Jonah P with him. Valon over his shoulder. That tandem pushing forward. As heretics have cut noise, suggesting they may leave, but G2 calling him on the bluff. 30 seconds left. Last really nice swing, a one for one, but those numbers do not add up when you're down. Valon with three as G2 get a, another round. This time, G2, they slow it down. They play together, Doug. That's the deciding factor in not letting Heretics back into this round. And Jonah P, he's the one that opened it up for his team. But it was the trading of G2. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that was so nice. And Valen closes it out with the trade onto site. Those kills feel so satisfying. Not giving Benji Fishy the ones that he got last time around. Right. And that's six to two on the defensive side of an attack-sided map like Lotus. Five stingers, light armor for Heretics. Cover going out. Seems like they're gonna try to play into the chaos. That is B. Early omen flash from Valen gets baited out, but Trent picks off the head of Woot. This site is often the source of Bedlam. And it seems like that's what Heretics want. A little bit of chaos injected into the situation. Oh, the that nade. nade over the top is beautiful. Doing a little bit of damage. They've committed to the plant. Leaf is going to be on the flank. And Valen pushing in from the other side, but the swing is too much. It's not too much for Trent, though. Boo's gotten the spike down. We've seen him in these 1vx situations at the end of the round so many times with the exact same result. Yeah, Valen whiffs in that moment, but even just backing up there and delaying time for Leaf to come all the way around from C. Wrap B, get that finishing blow. And deal heretics there. Seventh loss. And of course, this it's is Trent. With that's how he gets these kills. He's spammed uh, through the wall. Last can't teach that. With a phantom, too. You cannot teach that. That was off the contact from Valen. Nice. But it's like what I said. <laughs> it's like, oh it's like I said, though. No way. Oh no my God. way. If Valen drops down there, that doesn't open up the opportunity for heroics like that from Trent. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Will be another tap of the door for G2. The, the previous times, it's been Jonah P opening that door like that and then anchoring close in that choke, waiting to finesse around his Viper Smoke. This time they ping it. They know where the Viper Smoke is, so maybe Heretics will have a read onto this, understanding that it's a different setup on the A site from Jonah P. Right there. There's still a lot of presence close by, though. Yeah. This little off angle could be so deadly as yeah. well. If Benji Fishy tries to lurk up and doesn't hard clear it, he could get punished. It seems like they're going to try to split B, but again, Valen's already ahead of it. He's already rotating back B. He's joined up alongside with Trent. Icy still has his nade. There's still so much utility for them to dump into here. Spike planted. But they give up the site. They let the spike go down. It's going to be this battle of Jonah P and Benji Fishy that might make the difference. Who budges first? So far, Jonah P... He's playing so patient. He's got 14 kills. A war of attrition. Meanwhile, the action starting on B. The paranoia out of Jonah P. Falls. Heretics look so good here. They've got a numbers advantage, but they don't really have the space. It might be okay for though. They've got the cipher ult. I see on the swing. Can't hold the line. Can Trent? Come on. One dog is all he has. The cam spotting him. Daring the swing. There's not enough he can do there. Heretics get to three. That was a nice post plant from Heretics. 
Woot going huge, getting two to his name towards that water area. But the deciding factor to me was Benji Fishy winning that battle against Jonah P right here. Just waiting. He knew he had to lock down that broken door, which allowed his teammates to just all focus on the site. Oh, nice. oh, not to mention the ult. That gave him a body to use the ult off of, and that really opens everything up. Exactly. That makes the retake so much more difficult. Here. A lot of damage done, though, in that retake for G2. Only two players survived with guns. Still will be a full buy out of the side of Heretics. And this time around, a C default. They don't need to blow the trigger on that fault line. That I didn't connect on anybody. My ult is ready. That's a fade ultimate online for both sides now. After Patatek grabs that orb. I think now they're going to have Rians pressure some other spot of the map and maybe lean back towards C, or it will be just a fake. Oh, looks like they're going to pressure B. That might bait out a rotation from Icy. I mean, heretics have so many options right now. They could just manipulate things B. They could split B no, through no, door. No. They could fully commit C. They've set themselves up so nicely here. Oh. Paranoia is traded and kills R2. A one for one is valid. Not able to handle the aggression. Overwhelmed and outgunned. Now the first nightfall used and the second traded as the waves collide into one another. Silence settles over the map, but it's false. Nobody can hear anything right now. They don't even know bombs going down. Committed though, Trent on the spam. The flash will slow things down for just a moment. One more Prowler. No info gathered whatsoever in a fault line. It's back online off a of contact. Or perhaps just a delay. Now they're filling in on the space behind it. Benji Fishy so weak. G2 have been patient on this. So They've been so patient on this, but now having to go because time is of the essence. They try striking, but they meet nothing on the other side. They find very little. I mean, does he? I don't need. He doesn't have enough time to do this. He's going to get the kills, but the spike will go off. Heretics will get to four. That was an intense battle on the sites. We went fade alt for fade alt. Nobody hearing anything, but it was that breach utility to delay that I feel like was the deciding factor in giving Heretics the edge on the trades onto the site. And Benji Fishy just bides his time on that top site. He understands that the clock has ran down too low. Clean trades from Heretics. One more, one more. And a salvation to a half that G2 was just completely and utterly dominating. That's two in a row now for Heretics. They want to make it a third. That fall line out will tag Woot. Meanwhile, Boost. Oh, I thought he was going to fully commit. Woot falls. And it's that fall line, I think, that just messed up his timing. He wasn't ready for that little off angle from Valen. Mad advantage to G2 now, and Leaf took all this real estate. The trap has been set. They cannot rotate out. And Trent's playing this really nicely as well, filling in behind him. Yeah, if they give up B, so be it. They're gonna have a really nice retake angle if they commit that way, but Heretics, with the paranoia in their face, forced to dwell over whether or not they want to commit to this A site. It's getting more and more difficult. Jonah P's swing timing is perfect. One enemy remaining. Such a heavy advantage the way of the defense as they pick heretics apart one by one. Jonah P up close and personal, Doug. He's just in their face. 18, 4, and 11. What a performance from the kid, man. Stepping up huge on this map of Lotus. I mean, he was good on the last map too, but he's really delivering for G2 here. Jonah is insane. He is, I would have to agree with you entirely. Another player who's been insane this entire tournament, yeah, he's having a quieter map, quieter map here, is Icy, and we've got an Omen player moments with him teed up for you guys right now. This win versus Paper X, you know, it felt great. On split, it felt like we were able to get a better grasp of how they were playing the game and the way they game plan to prep for mm -hmm. The game versus us so we kind of like took that game as just something not very important just because there's more maps to look forward to so going into the next maps we kind of we had a good attack half on split 
I think that gave us a lot of confidence, like going to the next maps because we started to attack both sides. I think Balan, our IGL, was in flow state with his calls, so it just made everything pretty easy for me as a duelist. But, you know, job's not finished, so we gotta keep going, pushing forward. Just a push. They're taking Imbapon one, tucks into the corner, sends down that cove. They're trying to play a little bit more elusively in the Dizzy now. It notes him and takes him down. Trying to be able to play off that one. Showstopper now through, and they're so ready for it! I think exhaustion is a big play in some of the games. I know in Americas, we had a tough time dealing with the scheduling of things, and we were playing back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games. But I think if we're fully prepared and rested going into the games, I think we're going to come out strong and prove people wrong. I'm happy with our performance, qualifying to Shanghai, and you know, getting the wins here against Paper X and other teams we played against. But my expectation is to win the event, and the job's not finished. We often talk about confidence. There's a lot of confidence brimming from that kid right there. For him to go from tier three at the beginning of the year to now confidently saying at his first trip on the international stage that the expectation is to take home hardware. If that's not confidence, I don't know what is. And he said it the best. They're not done yet. That was the narrative of that ascent defensive side. Going into this one as well, an 8-4 half. You can't help but feel like they have complete control over this map at the moment. If Heretics want to have any resemblance of a comeback, it starts with the pistol round. The first few rounds of this map for Heretics will set the tone for the comeback. Shadows traveling. It's an early C default for G2. No fault line invested onto A because there was no contact there. Or grab by IC early on. A little refresh of the one way from Boo. Out. Here. And G2 should be aware of how Boo likes to play this side of the map. He likes to cycle the one ways, play up close, play in your face, TP out if he has to. If they can shut him down early on, make him back up, that could be a real big opening for G2 to start manipulating the map and use that double controller. Which is, I mean, that is objective number one if you're playing attack on Lotus. Especially with a comp like this. Yeah. It looks like they're gonna do, do just that. Still three players of Heretics towards the C side of the map. This is the opening spot. Who's the only one here? He doesn't have a TP or anything like that. He has no escape. He's gonna tuck tail and try to get away. All he's done is found a corner and the corner might be okay. He gets his one, deals more damage. Eventually falls left. the spike fully intent towards A now as it will get sunk into the soil of the site. Still a paranoia online, still a nade online for Icy. Position to delay the heaven flood. Balan is so far away. Oh, they don't want to go heaven. They want to take a little bit of a lower angle as they descend into the stairs. Omen flash use early on. Icy holding onto that nade. Now he invests it. It's causing chaos on the site. Balan gets an opening kill. That's exactly what they needed, Trent. Oh, they had no idea where he was. Finally settles things, gets the shots he needs. The tap is all it takes. Can Benji Fishy 1v2 this with a ghost in hand? This the time has been ticking for so long. There's just no way in. G2 with another pistol. With no signs of slowing down. Jonah P sitting at 20. It's been mind boggling. It's been fantastic. And Boo did a really good job of salvaging his life here, doing a lot of damage. But it was the crossfires on the site, and it was that omen flash and raise nade that Balan and Ice he kept. <laughs> that made it pandemonium on the site. Heretics, too much to deal with. They don't really have guns on the other side, and then you look at the buy from G2, it's formidable. Two rifles, a Vandal and a Guardian. If they're able to keep this clean and not drop any of those weapons, they're set up really nicely for the next round. Benji Fishy has to die to this nade here. He just survives. I don't know how he keeps doing this. So much utility blown. And he survives all of it. How does he live in these moments? That's a good answer. The head-to-head -head boost shutting down Jonah P.
The whole point of this anti-eco for G2 is to have stuff like that not happen. That's why the pack was towards C. Jonah P was playing so yeah. safe at A. And the moment that Jonah P creeps up at A, he gets just put down like that. Bot coming back. They have a lot of room to do this. It looks like they're going to flip back C, but that's where the vast majority of heretics are playing. But Valen is creating a distraction on this left. A side of the map by tapping that door and using Omen Flash. Yeah, but, but Boo holds his ground. When it's a pistol, like, when it's an eco like this, they don't have to bite on the first thing they see because they know they're going to want to lean into the chaos anyway. So they gamble, and they gamble correctly. Spot Trent down. falls, Leaf is weak. The satchels are botched. And with 10 seconds left, Icy has to go, and he has to go now. Finds the right window to strike. What was almost disaster has settled. They will get the spike down. Boo's gonna join the party and it's a little too late. That was almost disastrous for G2. Remember, Boo got the opening kill to this round with the Sheriff. Cover going off. Still hasn't taken any damage. Leaf is very weak. Still a Roomba online as well. They have the info. Oh, and the nade. Everything cleaned up. Icy gets three on the round as G2 gets to 10. That much closer. A fortuitous round for G2. That easily could have gone the other way. They ran into the stack, into the trap of Heretics. All because of that opener from Boo. What a shot. Spike down. But in the high pressure moment, it was Icy who took the round into his own hands and opened up the entire site, allowing the bomb to be planted. Uh, dumpy utility at the beginning of the round. Boo taking a lot of aggressive space here. Securing the orb for Woot. This aggressive Cypher Cam on C. Valen hears it toggle. Yeah, These are the changes that G2 did not have in the previous Three matchup. That C cam was up a lot of the times. Securing Heretics the info that nobody was seeing. Trent's about to deal with a lot of pressure. He's out of there. Gets away, but Leaf is over the top. Cleans him up. There's the counter punch. Jonah P as well. Placing they thought grenade. they had him. And yeah, they Placing did, but... It was all, but it was all a carrot on a stick. And it was all because of that info that was denied from the Cypher Cam. I see investing the ult here. Benji Fishy still alive. Managing to avoid the trip. Now falls. And it wasn't off of the rocket, but they got what they were looking for anyway. Rian sucked in smoke, takes a little bit of damage. Peppered. Spike planted. Although obscured. Rian's on the swing, getting one. He and Boo will have to stand strong here. They have the utility to do so. Omen flash, a smoke, almost a full stun out. Two players hit. Where's the follow-up? Leaf is the only one who's gone undetected. And again, he's the one who saves the round. Just when they thought they had him. Of course, it's Leaf who strikes. Rians has no real way to get in here. And they don't have a ton of money. He's not going to try to save it. He will fall. G2 get to 11. The adaptations from G2, they're so fruitful. Simple things like breaking a Cypher Cam early on and then waiting for any type of reclear. That was a bait from the start from Trent. He's spamming, trying to break any trips. The fault line comes out because of the proactivity. Hi, that boy. Come on, baby. But they got punished. Two players went down on that B fight. That's a scary sight when you look at Valen. He's got that dog in his eyes. A killer's mentality. And that's when G2 are at their best. 11-4 here. Heretic's calling a timeout, the last one of the map. To go from three rounds away from the Mercedes-Benz Arena to this hole they've dug themselves is a wild turn of the tides. They're going to have to do the unthinkable. They're going to have to do what G2 did. They're, they're going to have to dig deep. What do they have left in the tank? The thing is, everybody underestimates G2. Everybody counts them out. 
Heretics counted them out on that Ascent game. But they thrive in moments like that. It fires them up. It's gonna be a head-to-head -head battle here for A control. A change of pace from G2. They haven't exploded out here yet. Can they punish Boo? Yes, they can. It's that effortless. A shoddy buy. Playing for a tie here. They're saving for the next. And a freeze to the round after an opening entry. And on the mini-map, Leaf is aware that there's a deep Cypher Cam C. That's why they're all grouping up, and Jonah B is tapping this door. It's keeping all the players A. This is a perfect call. There it is. They're just going to run it down. They know that Heretics like to over-rotate off of the Cam info. And even so, they're still fainting it with utility. Wait, what's going on here? Overthinking it. They're rotating back. This was what almost caused problems a couple of rounds ago, but this time, Heretic's on the rotate away. Jonah P hears him, punishes him. Pat attack down. Meanwhile, Leaf is gonna catch them once more, nipping at their heels as they try to rotate back A. But realizing that the round left. is likely lost. I mean, Valen just played him like a fiddle duck. Flawless. A flawless round to get G2 one round away. What IG yelling from Valen and yeah, I mean they probably could have just planted the bomb C and went up against a 5v4 retake But there's no need when you're just manipulating all the rotations on the map Footsteps being heard from Jonah P to punish One enemy remaining. Flawless. 25 6 and 12 I cannot stress how much impact Jonah P has had on this last deciding map of Lotus Pace towards A. Leaf will explore the middle of the map on his own as the utility comes out. Tries to punish, but Patty a step ahead of it. And the world is yeah. G2s right now. They can pressure A, go against a solo Benji Fishy. They can transition into front B. Leaf, he's playing this 4 1 so well. He's listening for all the utility, relaying the information to his IGL of Valen, who can then make the deciding call. A close trip was broken. One prowler broken and a rewalk for Leaf. And another kill found. And he's out. Full advantage for G2. This could very well be it. The nightfall to pave the way. Benji Fissi trying to play back sight to Cam. No, not gonna buy him enough time here, but that will certainly help. Traded instantly from Trent. It's Rians. Found. It's found one for one, though. Rians able to punish, but they've gotten a little bit of space here. Now they're going to get the pit. But Patatek and Boo, so healthy. Patty falls. G2 looking to deal with a devastating death blow. On to Heretics. And what looked unreachable, what looked uncertain, will be found. G2 are headed to the Mercedes-Benz Arena. What a war both these teams just went through. But G2, the ones resilient enough to come out on top, the mental fortitude of this team to be down 11-2 on, de on defensive side of set. And the comeback being an eco round that was started by the rookie of Icy. 11-3. And, and then to capitalize there, you had to force. You had no other choice. That force got them here. And again, man, a roster that's been built in the face of adversity. They had offers to be broken up. They had plenty of opportunities to go their separate ways and find success elsewhere. But fully believing the process fully committed to the plan. They stood together on a domestic soil, and now they bow together on the international stage.
What a performance, man. What a comeback. And honestly, the G2 way. <laughs> I still can't believe it. I'm sure everybody out there can't believe it.